Hello. I noticed there were two links in the invite, one of which asked for a password and oh, one of which should be here by now. I'll poke him and Arctic as well. Some people are having trouble getting in. It looks like Zoom is asking for a password for some people. So I'm going to keep watch, but looks like some people are able to get in. There were uh, two links in the invite I got. Hmm. Yeah. This is the correct one. one. So, uh, the, uh, the yeah, there's, there's a second one in there at the very top. Hey, Amy. I was just asked for the password for this call by someone, but I don't think we yeah. have a password. Do we have a password on this particular room, so I'm I'm kind of confused. <laughs> yeah, there's two Zoom links in there. There's like the CNCF SIG observability the, one, the thick um, the no. fixed account and the other one. That one is yes. a um an, an alias of the uh. The, the numerical one. So it looks like folks are coming on in. <coughs> right again, Richie. Can you hear us, Richard? So either all of you are quiet or no, you're good. No, you're good. Oh, you. no, I hear you. Okay. All good now. All good now. Okay. okay. I didn't hear anything. It was like okay. 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 So I just got word from a coworker that he needs the password to join the Zoom, which is kind of weird. And I sent him the link again and. Just yes. to make sure, yes. Amy, you didn't set exactly, any, any... Exactly. So in the calendar, so in the calendar, the link with the number, not with the observability something. Yeah, we should update. Uh, I will fix um, it. Zoom is being yeah. awfully helpful. Uh, Zoom has decided that we need passwords on all of our meetings. This is not as helpful as you might expect. So. Oh, I, I know how, how helpful I expect this to be.
Okay. All right. Looks like most folks are coming on in, so I'll let you go ahead and get started. Yeah, it seems like. Um, so Matt is probably not here because he's on holiday, which means I'll probably run the show. I just need to open the doc, sorry. I was trying to fix my sound until right now. So um, there we go, janitorial, we can probably kill unless we have someone new who wants to do intros. Good. So the other thing is just updated from, uh, from CNCF. Um, we had a CNCF, TOC, and SIG chair call last week. And basically, um, the TOC is fine with us suggesting changes to, to pretty much whatever. Uh, we should just um, suggest it and they'll, they'll look at it. But it didn't sound as if they were too much set on any particular parts of the questionnaire or of the, of the template. Um, it, Gut feeling is they are probably rubber stamp whatever we whatever we propose. Um, Alois, Amy, how how did you perceive this? I could not join last week because I had a company meeting. So okay. Yeah, Amy. Um, uh, at TOC is fine with being able to have suggestions put in. Um, I am thinking. Yeah, yeah, you're you're totally accurate. So okay. Well then. Okay, and the other thing, sorry, I'm jumping outside of the agenda, but I literally have back-to-back -back meetings today. Um, there was a um, user survey by, by Cortex in preparation also for the due diligence and such. Um, Gautam shared the, the results with me. It's like a lot of those questions are are rather uh, text heavy and open for interpretation and not so not so uh, metric heavy as it were. Um, so I was thinking to maybe even run a second one based on the Prometheus uh, survey, which was sent out uh, last Friday, I think, because that also has like scaling numbers about how many how many um, how many metrics do you actually run? What's your scraping interval? How many how many data points do you get per X amount of time? Questions like that. On the other hand, running two surveys uh, directly be, uh, behind each other is kind of weird, but like learning from this and also feeding this back as yet another template to, to CNCF to, to basically have something to work with for future due diligence uh, probably makes sense. Uh, question is, what do the other think about this? Ah, uh, Gotham also just tossed survey results in there. I suspect those is those are the anonymous anonymized. Yeah, I think they were anonymized, yeah. And it's the anonymized version. Of course, uh, the initial version or the original version obviously has has uh, names in it, which is kind of no go. Yeah, so um, what do people think? I am personally not a fan of running another survey right after this, but we can do it if we really want to. My thinking is that in part we are, we are spearheading at least part of the processes within CNCF and we already hit several walls where, where the process can be improved, let's say. Um, and if we are able to, to give a template for something which worked, also in, in, in regards to questionnaires and user surveys, I think that actually makes sense and creates more benefit within CNCF. So that's why I'm, why I'm co even considering to do it twice. Um, like, we don't need to run the actual survey, but we can uh, create a new template uh, based on the Prometheus one and the Cortex one and say this could be one of the template things, but like 
what what do the other cortex maintainers think brian uh, marco or batek <laughs> Yeah, I think I agree. Like, let's uh, get those learnings for the future surveys, but let's not spam users, essentially. Uh, I think those numbers are on serious. I think they are larger than Prometheus from what I have seen anyway. So I think they are good enough for incubation. That's uh, what we would like to get from this survey for our purposes. So I don't think we need to repeat that. But yeah, that's my opinion. Uh, but we should have those questions for next ones for sure. Also, if I may, uh, just one point to note, I fully expect TOC to then challenge why that new template hasn't been used for Cortex, um, which has an obvious answer, but just to, to anticipate the future, I'm, I'm willing to bet that this challenge will happen. And it's like, that's the logical thing uh, anyway. I mean, okay. let's run it if the TOC challenges um... But like Brian, what do you think? I, I didn't see the other template, but you sounds like you're saying the key difference is, is that you wanted numbers. It's just the most prominent uh, difference. I'll see if I can find the survey uh, as we speak. I mean, um, it's, you know, the, the numbers don't seem you know, yeah, it's data, but it doesn't seem critical to me. I mean, it may just raise more questions like, oh, your system is really small. Why did you pick Cortex for a really small system? You know, just sort of iterates. We, we can learn more and more and more about these. Well, yeah, we've got how many? 20 responses now, and you'll be down to five by the time you've asked them eight times. Yeah. Yeah, so to, to cycle back, there are other differences, but um, if, if Cortex uh, has consensus that not running another survey is the way to go, then we already have consensus. No one else is speaking up. So from the, from the working group's point of view, um, there is no reason to, to challenge the decision by Cortex. Like just to, of just to, course, obviously I had my head of suggesting this, but now with the chair head on, I'm I'm completely fine with this. Um, yeah, I'm I'm fine with this. I I don't have a strong opinion on this either way. I definitely share the concern of doing too many surveys back to back. So I mean, if it is if people feel like we should hold off, that seems to make sense. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine either way. Okay, so I hope everyone has read the document which we are about to dive into, the due diligence document. Um, we had much more time since last time. We are on page 11, unless um, there's any substantial change above which we should be taking into account. There were some to-dos. Have those been addressed, Gotham? I honestly don't know. I didn't have time today. Yeah, we addressed all of the requests and we commented on every piece that was um, addressed. So maybe we can go through the commented bits, maybe. Okay. Uh, so let me share my screen, just a moment. So you should be able to see that document. Yes, no? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. yeah, just asking girls, yeah. okay. Okay, that's basically. So just to make this explicit, um, I would set uh, in, in the update towards CNCF TOC, I would just kill that question because it's, it's not really phrased in a useful way. Okay, so document that the project is usual for cloud native deployments and degree that it's architected in a cloud native style. So, answer like, is no. Uh, yep, so this is another super vague, super open ended question like, what does cloud native style mean and things like that? So, me and Bartek decided to have a smaller answer. Yeah. 
I would be fine with this and would be doing the, the game of consensus as last time. Um, just do a new date, because we just so we have a paper trail of what changed. So the proposal is, is here, the proposal for consensus, uh, basically that we are happy with this answer. Are there any, any other uh, thoughts, comments regarding this? I guess just in general, I question for the initial question, the incubation question in, in general, not the answer, but what is the, what's the goal of this? Like, is the only concern if the answer is no? Because um, I kind of agree, like you can make it pretty general, but what is the hope of asking this question? So I, uh, I would tend towards saying that this is one of the questions which we will be getting back to UC on and suggest improvements because it's completely undefined. In the scope of the question, I think the answer is <laughs> a little bit blunt, but, but fitting. I agree. Well, I think that the, the, the CNCF won't have a definition. It's just not in there. So there would be like specific criteria. Like it has a declarative API. So it can be deployed on a cloud native platform. It, it It is available via containers. So there would be like actually a number of criteria that the CNCF itself defines for cloud native applications. They're just not part of this application. So technically, if you would say yes, it can be shipped as a container. It can be deployed either via a CRD and an operator to Kubernetes and these kind of things, you could actually list all the criteria that the CNCF defines for cloud native. But yeah. arguably the question does not put this one in there here necessarily. Um, but can you link me to the criteria? Then I can update it, I just couldn't find uh, it. I can link you actually, it link you to a medium post, but it has the copy in there of the CNCF. I just could not immediately find the CNCF one. Um, but the CNCF, there is a CNCF definition. Yeah, I, I, like I tried looking for it and couldn't find it, which is why it's super vague. Otherwise I would have done that. Yeah, so like, uh, I found it before. I just now did not immediately find it. And I have it also in another document. It would not be a link, but actually that's the screenshot from the CNCF website. Okay, yep. Um, I will update it to follow the cloud native style. But if you could find the original CNCF one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it right now. So, so should we should we not uh, uh, make the call for consensus for this one uh, right now then? Should we wait for Gautam to, to update the document in the background? Or should we just say that in the scope of that question, we're happy? I'm, I'm basically happy with all of them. I just hope that we are able to, to, to actually either say, yes, we're happy with the complete document or we're unhappy with the complete document at the end of this call. I mean, I think it's fine if they want to try to, if we want to try to update it behind the scenes, I think that's okay. But yeah. given the question, the answer seems fitting. Okay. So then again, call for consensus. Anyone actually object to this phrasing? And just to make it explicit, this phrasing is that as of today, SIG observability is happy with the answer. Ship it. Yeah, so I actually found the definition. I'm posting it in the chat right now. It's at the very top part of the CNCF charter. If you look at the mission of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, that also contains the Cloud Native definition. Okay. Yeah, but then still this question needs to be tightened up and, and actually refer to that blah, 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 blah. So it, become, it becomes a checklist because currently it's, yeah. it's basically a sentiment. On the plus side, we all agree with the sentiment, so whatever. Okay, then let's reduce. Document that the project has an affinity, affinity for how CNCF operates and understands the expectation of being a CNCF project. Yeah, I think concrete examples were added. By Gotham, and I think it makes sense. 
like one, two, three. I think the argument with with um, several team members also being part of other projects, especially graduated projects, as in Prometheus, um, and I think even Kubernetes, no, I don't know, um, already holds water in it as of itself. So um, I would also suggest the same um, the same phrasing for the call for consensus that as of today, SIG observability is happy with this answer. Um, agreements, disagreements? Agree. Okay. Yes, yes, so I was asked to, well, I kind of proposed to actually check if those maintainers in the list are actually active so I looked on the last quarter, there was like a good, uh, really nice dashboards, um, Grafana dashboards for developer stats. Uh, if you click link, you can, you can open it. But essentially, the TLDR is that most of the mentioned maintainers are quite active, especially the top three ones are uh, like having at least, you know, seven contributions per day, which means probably comments and or commits or reviews. So I think that's definitely um, considered as active. No, but I also tend to agree. Well, someone already copied. Did I copy this in or did someone else copy this in? You might accidentally move that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, just point of order, please don't, uh, it's, it was probably me, if it wasn't me, please don't copy and call for consensus motions, cause else uh, it'll get super confusing. Uh, but again, it was probably me doing something wrong. Um, yeah, so looking at the numbers and also uh, looking at the, at the actual requirement, which is to have a healthy uh, number of committers, I think uh, that that the same call for consensus um, still holds as an as of today, SIG observability is happy with this answer. All agreed? Yep. Very good. Very good. So this one we 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 said that it's very it's like one to one which what with which what we proposed in the PR. So the request was to copy the exact content. Okay. So by definition, I would say that that we are happy with this. Um, still call for consensus, uh, given that this is literally the same text as, as used before. Um, everyone agreed? Very good. So, Gotham, do you want to talk about this one? Yep. So, initially, like, our famous architecture was because we basically added more and more components uh, and complexity. But recently, we've shipped a uh, single binary, single process mode, where you basically deploy a cortex process and then just increase the cortex replicas to scale up. And that simplifies or like that simplifies the operation a lot instead of having to manage five or six different microservices. So that's like one trade off we made. The other one initially was that we were lacking in documentation. And over the past year or so, we've added a website, proper production guides and all of that, but we still have a long way to go and we're working on documentation. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. So, same proposal. As of today, stick observability is happy with this answer. Disagreements, agreements? Ship it. <laughs> Very good. 
Oh, there we are. Okay. So here is um, where we left off last time. Um, point of order. Do we need to read through this or is everyone on this call prepared for, for just uh, walking through this at speed because they read the rest of the document in the meantime uh, since the last call? It's totally fine. If not, uh, this is literally why I'm asking. Like, obviously, I would prefer that, that it isn't the case, but if it's the case, that's so completely fine. So should we walk through this quickly or, or read through it uh, piece by piece? I have 15 people on this call, and so I have at least 14 opinions. Maybe if anyone <laughs> wants, if anyone wants to, to, to have a slow readout, please speak up. Let's skim it. OK. Cool. Last chance. But again, it's completely fine if you want to do it slow. I want to do this proper. I also want to be mindful of all our time, but I also want to do this proper. So. Now is the time to speak up. Okay. Okay. Do we believe that's a growing and thriving project? It's aligned with the CNCF values, that it could meet graduation criteria, that it should start at sandbox in incubation level. Well, that's kind of a stupid question in this context. Um, that it has a sound documented process for source control, issue tracking and release management, that, it's, that there is a documented process for adding committers, that there is a governance, that there are committers from multiple organizations, that there is a code of conduct, that does have a license, uh, that it does DCO. Um, can you add which license? I think it's a Apache, but uh, can you add which license, please? Um, that there is a certain quality to inform the communication around the project. Um, that, sorry, I just, um, that there is ample time or that there is just an answer to the question if uh, there is time committed by the core team, um, how big the team is, if there are clear leaders, if there is a surrounding community ex uh, outside of the core team, if it's easy enough to contribute, if, <laughs> if there are especially difficult personalities to deal with, and if there is a rate of ongoing contributions. So all of these, uh, after skimming them and after reading it on, uh, in preparation for last, uh, last call, I would propose that we state that we are happy with all of these answers. All agreed? Disagreements? Agreements? Yeah, I personally agree. I read them through in details. Very good. Did you put the license? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So, users. Who uses the project? Um, we have case studies in uh, as a reference, so obviously they are end users. Also, by the way, as we had that topic last time, end users are clearly defined within CNCF as people who don't provide services for others. So service providers are not defined as end users. I happened about uh, to, to read this sometime a few days ago, and I just remembered that we had this discussion. Um, what the strengths and weaknesses are, this is uh, the survey results. So that's, um, that's fine. If it's used or not used, I think we can agree that it is uh, used. Yeah, and that the, the documentation has improved leaps and bounds. I think we also have consensus about this. So same call for consensus. As of today, SIG observability is happy with the answers in the above section. All agreed, agreements, disagreements? Um, just to add one more thing, like if you look at uh, the survey results, most of them, uh, like a lot of them say that documentation was their biggest problem, but also, a lot of the users say that uh, the documentation has improved in recent times. Uh, 
um, yeah, what like uh, having said that, we are actively working on documentation. It's much better than what it was 18 months ago, but uh, we still want to improve it, and that's one of my biggest priorities. Yeah. And taking off my Grafana, uh, my my chair head, and uh, putting on my Grafana Labs head for a second, I know that there is actually um, actual time by a tech writer uh, being committed towards this as well. So. Um, I know it's true, just for the benefit for the others on the call. So firmly taking off the Grafana Labs hat again uh, and putting back on the chair hat. So as of today, SIG observability is happy with the answers in the above section. All agreed? Very good. Context questions origin and history of the project, I think we are all aware of this. And also we are just skimming that it fits the market and the techni technical ecosystem, that it's growing, it's kind of obvious. If it's necessary and if um, it's adequate or not and in what situations. Co uh, comparing and contrasting to, peering, uh, to peers, maybe other projects would be the better, the better um, phrasing. Um, as you will be shocked to hear, my suggestion for the call for consensus is once again that we are happy with the answers in the above section. All agreed? Yeah, but it would be nice to have some TLDR of this context, like what's the outcome of this? Like essentially the outcome looks like that the product is growing and and solving the important problem and is collaborating with kind of the nearest competitor. That would be the TLDR, right? And yeah, I agree. Yes. I, I, I skipped that part on, on purpose, but yes, um, I think um, that, the, that the comparison section is, is, uh, is valid, especially when it comes to um, CNCF. Um, related metrics projects. Of course, like you have a ton of other players in the overall field, but within the context of CNCF, which is obviously the main context we are operating on within this document and within this call, um, I think it's fair to basically compare to Thanos, of course, course um, comparing to Prometheus doesn't really make sense and you don't really have a lot of other metrics solutions or platforms within, within CNCF. But if someone disagrees and would like to see a more in-depth uh, review against other other uh, projects, now is the time to speak up. Yeah, I mean, the only comment that I can maybe make on this 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 point here, it might be interesting uh, to have like an end user point of view on this. If I'm an end user and I want to choose between Thanos and Cortex what would be the criteria of my big one project over the other. So right now the feedback is very technical and related obviously to some of those bits and pieces. Okay. Um, is this something which you would like to see within the scope of six, six observability or within the scope of this document which is required for due diligence for incubation? I just think it might be like one of the feedbacks um, that you're getting. Okay, as, as an end user, would I know when to use which of the two projects? Um, okay, so the comment is in the context yeah. of feeding this back to TOC as an improvement of the of the checklist and questionnaire. Like, or or would you like to see this answered in this document? I, I'm, I'm I'm not sure. I'm getting where you are where you're trying to get. I, I would, I mean, it was just a proposal. I might want to put it into the document. If you have somebody just reading it, how would you like to answer this question? Like, should I pick A or B? And is there a value of having both? And when do it? Because there's like two projects that do pretty much the same thing from an end user's yeah. perspective. Oops, sorry. Uh, why would I pick A versus B? Okay. Um, I mean, we can, we can request that, that, uh, this is put into this section as well, because I can see the value. Um, 
the question is, are we still happy with this section even without this or should we uh, call off the, the consensus call until, until that is added? Or are we happy as long as Bartek uh, and or Gautam added? It's kind of hard to add it. Um, like you can use both to do the same things. Um, like, but uh, there's an entire ComCon talk on the different trade-offs and, but we, we deliberately avoid saying you should choose this or that because like Cortex is aiming, like it's, it's, it's hard to say, uh, to tell a user to pick A or B. What do you say Bartek? I think it's, it's harder uh, every day because like we are collaborating so much that we are literally starting to use the same API and, and having the same features, like very detailed features, like we catch the same things. We, we use exactly the same format nowadays. And, you know, saying that, hey, you should use this versus that is just, just some, another argument for separation, whereas we're trying to go, go kind of together um, and yeah, the differences are, are very, very small and, and they are getting even smaller. So I think this is a very unique situation. Um, so I'm not sure if this will be helpful for people. Like right now, it's very, very similar experience, I would say. Is Thanos multi-tenant? Thanos is multi-tenant as well. <laughs> so the, However, the big philosophical difference. I just put this in. The big philosophical difference is, is that the Cortex centralizes all of the that's, data. That's, right, that's not true because the, Thanos receiver is product, production ready and have the same. So th those boundaries are, are getting, you know, um, blurred. Yep. So even they have a ring and they have the ingesters, uh, like uh, it's getting closer and closer. Mm. Uh, and like, I. I think also, suggestion uh, is best. Also, I think quite honestly, this is outside the scope of the discussion we're having about the due diligence of Cortex. Um, I think I think Alois general point makes sense. And I just added some verbiage, uh, which which gives uh, gives some some hand holding. Uh, beyond that, I think it shouldn't be in a technical document for the technical due diligence on a member project. I think it should be in kind of an overview or maybe a best current practices document or something which goes more into depth about the trade-offs and about the design goals. But, so as soon as we're out of the document, I'm fully fine uh, discussing those deeper points, but as long as we're in the document, I'm trying to, to compress and to, to try and focus on that document, because else we will end up uh, talking forever without actually having final closure on the document. Anyway, I think it's a valid request. Let's add it to the GitHub issues or something like that. Let's create some best, uh, best pattern here, uh, but not in this document maybe. Yeah, for this document, I already added a small section, which I'm currently highlighting in the screen share. Um, we also have a question in the chat, Richie. I don't know if you saw the question. No, I didn't. Thank you. Uh, where are we? What message? Uh, Should we motivate I, I, by considering two projects doing the same thing then? It's in the Zoom chat. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I was looking at. The, okay. I can't see the chat where I'm screen sharing, so let me stop. Screen. Yeah, well, that's that's actually a good question. It's again, unless it's something which blocks from moving into incubation, it's not something which should be discussed within the within the due diligence call. So unless, uh, Stefan, unless you disagree, I would actually tend towards jumping back into the document, finalizing the document, and then jumping to do the question. It's a valid question. I think there is a good answer to it, but I would just like to close the other thing first. Objections? Yeah, I think he objects. Or he does? does. Stefan, he okay. seems like a due diligence consideration still. Okay. Uh, In this case, um, 
as CNCF is explicitly not about king making and as CNCF is explicitly about having a an open or a level playing ground between the different projects which are members um, there is no CNCF level consideration to not have both of them incubate. You can argue that maybe only one of them should graduate, for, but for incubating, basically leaving Sandbox and getting into incubation stage, I don't think it's a consideration which the TOC would be, would be making. But we can jump back into the document and, and discuss it actively. Yeah, so I think the point is, uh, now I'll also in the chat, I think it's not a problem going forward because to your point, which is not one of the criteria where it has another project within CNCF that does the same thing, this shouldn't even be the case. We could just make it as a review comment and I think there's also a lot of statements in there saying, okay, there is already collaboration between the projects, which is great and obviously we recommend that we, there's a clearer Step, step forward at some point between the projects, but I think it doesn't matter for due diligence, really. We did due diligence have... is about project quality, not about uh, whether there's another project within CNCF that does the same thing. No. And again, CNCF even explicitly encourages this by, by stating and repeating that they do, do not intend to be the kingmakers. Um, there should be competition between the projects, and if a project withers and dies, that's that's the normal life cycle of a project. Yeah, I think it, the, the point is just that there should be at some point a distinction between those uh, projects, or you might consider at some point merging, like what happened to open sensors and open telemetry, uh, open uh, tracing at some point. If this is something, or if there is a clear distinction, it might still persist. Well, we, we, you should know we tried very hard to merge the two projects over years. The, there are, it's not an easy thing to do. Let, let, let's get back to this question right after, because I think it's a, it's a relevant, it's a good question, and I have tons of opinions about this as as and uh, So if you allow me, just, this is Stefan, just one comment. I, I, I am new to the process here, and by no means do I suggest that, you know, it is something that's a problem or not. All what I'm suggesting is that that justification or that acknowledgement that the project overlap and why they, they overlap and it's not an issue should be stated in the document. That's all. I don't think it's needed for this document, but I don't object putting it in. So, so the, the best uh, course of action is probably to just put it in. Um, just a second. Oh, actually, it's already in there. This is further aided by the large overlap of Prometheus Cortex and Thanos maintainership and close coordination between maintainership and code and close coordination between all three projects. Uh, Stefan, is this a phrasing which you would be happy with? Well, I, I still believe that you don't say why it's not an issue that those projects overlap. And okay. I think that that would be valuable to state, that's all. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense if you are new to this process because we had the same kind of thing and discussion in the beginning where we move those two projects to Sandbox, and we totally discussed that so far, but if you are new, that's definitely worth to reiterate. Is this a phrasing you would be happy with, Stefan? Yes, thank you. Okay, 
uh, two times explicit. Okay. Cool. So, call for consensus. Sig observability is happy with the answers in the above section. All agreed? Agreements, disagreements? Agree. Nice. So we can jump out of this document. Of course, we are through with this document. And now I just need to find my meeting notes. Here we are. Oh, how did we do consensus calls in this document before? Did we do it under? Yeah, we did it under, okay. So what is the next steps? Um, me making call for consensus for two more things on the document or on the, on the uh, meeting note level, and then we move on to the next step. So first was, um, Okay, so the first call for consensus on, on this level, SIG observability is happy with the user survey and thus with the Cortex user survey and does not request another round. I think we already have agreement, but I just want to make it explicit. All agreed? Good. And now the first actually non-genitorial thing which we as a SIG achieved, which I think we are doing in the second or third officially instan instantiated call, which is quite nice. SIG observability accepted the Cortex due diligence document or accepts, sorry, accepts the Cortex due diligence document and will submit it to T T C and CF TUC for further discussion. All agreed, disagreements, agreements? I f this is good, but like um, the, I would mention that we are kind of put it as our recommendation as well, because this is what we will do in the next TOC call, right? And this is what we agreed to. Like the SIG observability is making recommendation that this project should go. <laughs> okay, yeah. SIG observability accepts the Cortex due diligence document, will submit it to CNCF2 for further discussion and suggests moving Cortex to incubation stage. All agreed? Whoop, whoop. Okay. So we can either discuss the work stream idea or we can go, go more in depth on the, um, on the overlaps of, no, actually we've already talked about it and close it. Okay, so work stream ideas. Um, I think that was Steve's thing. So yes, it is, yeah. perfect. Steve, do you want to? Yeah, happy to. So I, I, by design actually, have not shared this out broadly. Uh, I will ask people to review it for the next SIG meeting so we can discuss it in more depth. I uh, just wanted to talk about it at a high level to kind of ensure the same agreement and understanding. So there's a doc that's uh, attached. Uh, please feel free to comment. Everyone should have rights on it, hopefully. Uh, make edits, modifications, so we can discuss it more in depth. Uh, it's very high level. It's more like a charter than it is like a deep dive on the specifics by design to ensure that it's aligned with the direction that the SIG believes that we should go in. Uh, so basically, the proposal that was made at a very high level was uh, around kind of promoting and providing more awareness of SIG, of observability projects in CNCF and what that might look like. 
the goal is not to duplicate any efforts that CNCF already has uh, or or like promote a single solution or like best practices or what have you. So there are some like non goals listed at the bottom as well. Uh, but the idea is just to kind of show off specifically the observability products and how they tie together and the types of problems that they can solve. So I, I listed a few goals here at a very high level, like how would content be shared? How would we track that content? Uh, what would be the guidelines for contributing content? Because we don't want it to kind of be a free for all. For example, it's not about like vendor pitches that should absolutely not be the goal and needs to be explicitly called out. Uh, the different types of content that we might want to share, whether it's kind of basic getting started stuff or a much more deep dive of like solving real world problems that exist as a result of using these technologies. Um, and of course, kind of opening this up to a broader audience so that anyone can really contribute and get involved. It shouldn't be just about maintainers or just about like known name people that typically do blog posts or what have you. Uh, the goal here is really to, to share and collaborate and to provide more visibility as to what is possible and what people are doing with these different technology stacks. Uh, on the second page, again, very high level, I listed a few open questions. I'm sure there are more, so please kind of post them in here so we can get them added as well. Uh, some of the big ones that come to mind would be just any overlap with CNCF. So for example, I already crossed out one of the potential uh, categories. Uh, as it turns out today, CNCF already has a way to promote new projects, new releases and graduation type stuff. I don't think duplicating any of that effort makes sense. Uh, and then the second one, if people are not aware, there's a proposal out to change how sandbox is done in CNCF. That could have repercussions as to what is possible from uh, a social media type uh, type stuff. Uh, for example, sandbox projects may not be eligible to participate in this uh, as a result of some of the upcoming uh, proposals that are being made uh, at the CNCF level. Um, so I guess at a high level, does anyone have any immediate comments or suggestions or do people think this is a good idea, bad idea, heading down the right path, the wrong path? I'm just trying to get some initial feedback as to whether folks think this makes sense uh, and whether it's worth pursuing uh, more in depth. Yeah, I think it's an amazing idea. Uh, the question is how we can, what's the actionable thing that everyone can do after this meeting to help this uh, put forward? So I think the, the immediate thing I would ask is please review this doc and please uh, start commenting on it on things you think should be added, removed, what have you. So we can get to a more uh, concrete, like, yes, this makes sense, let's move forward with it. Uh, on the next meeting, what I'd like to do, and I guess we can talk about kind of more specifics, determine if there were, whether we wanna have like a sub working group here where a subset of people kind of get together and propose an initial charter or whatever term we want to have here to make this more official as to who's going to help like design and develop these ideas and then present them more broadly so we can get consensus on whether or not we want to move forward with the proposal. Um, and then just to start lining up content, I think in general, whether we have all these criteria done or not, I think getting some initial content or some initial people that are interested in providing content Writing content takes time. Uh, so just kind of trying to get alignment for that by next meeting, I think would be beneficial. Other comments? And if people are aware, like, hey, my project's already doing X, Y, Z, it's been good, it's been bad, like that's helpful too. Or people are aware, like I've worked with CNCF and they suggested the following. I've talked a little bit to them uh, in regards to what they have in terms of blogs and webinars, uh, but I don't know all the specifics. So I'm sure there's a lot of knowledgeable people here. Uh, please, please add to this. No, I'm super excited. I'm planning to create a new meetup, observability meetup in London. Um, so I'm looking forward to collaborate on this together. Nice. On that note, are you planning to rename the Prometheus one or like literally create a yeah, new one? Yes, I'm kind of, kind of in the same boat for the Berlin one. And I was just wondering about this again, if we should like eventually do this now that we have been running. Cool. So again, I want to keep this very high level just to kind of socialize the idea. I will share this on the list so people can review it for the next uh, SIG meeting. And hopefully we can spend some time to get to some real specifics as to who would be interested in kind of working on this subgroup to kind of define the criteria. Uh, and anyone that might be interested in uh, sharing content that could be used uh, initially. Thanks, folks.
Okay. If there are no more comments, I think we will go to Bartek. Yeah, this is a very short one. So I think initially we created about having some rolling docs idea where we kind of um, put the things that are ongoing that uh, we are in do doing right now and who is doing what and where people can uh, just get in and maybe help if they have some spare time. I we didn't use this, even though you Richie created those documents. And uh, I think the problem is that, uh, yeah, we kind of, I don't know, either the idea is, is um, either we don't know how to use it, how to properly get advantage of it, um, or it's, it's actually unused for, for last month. So I would propose actually to stick to GitHub issues where you can label them. Um, I think it's kind of, you know, you can have some discussions, so it's not that bad. So um, I think that would be actually even easier to spot the areas, the tasks that someone can help with today and just, uh, you know, bring it to and just do it in their spare time. So I would suggest this uh, instead of like rolling dogs and then we can think of something else if, if that would be not enough. So what, what would you think? I'm deliberately trying to, to get others room and, and, and time to, to answer, <laughs> but I can also, um, it probably makes sense. My one, yeah, the, the, the one thing which, which I, I don't want to fall into the trap of basically hiding to do's and stuff in, in the document, because it will just, as soon as it's out of view, people will forget about it. It will stop being tracked and updated. So I, 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 I can see the idea working, but then I think we need someone to volunteer to actually follow up and go through this living document and make sure that all to-dos are either handled within a certain amount of time, let's say until the next call, or are moved into an actual issue. That we basically, sure. maybe this even has the advantage that we kind of incentivize people to, to, to do stuff within the call cycle and not just let it sit. Because then they have less overwork in getting back and, and closing stuff. Yeah, the issues you can assign, you can, it's more verbose. Um, and with the rolling dog, it's exactly the same issue. You need to go through the living dog and kind of paste into rolling dog, I guess. Yeah, it just feels more natural. The GitHub flow, and we could just start and then see uh, see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So, so my take, I think, I think for actual action items, GitHub issues work better. We still need somebody to curate this because I think all of us have too many GitHub projects that they're already getting issues from. So it would be like part of the review cycle for every meeting that you go over those issues and would have to assign them. I also agree that a doc is good for collaboration if you want to discuss something. Because you would write a white paper, an issue would be kind of a weird way to handle it. But if there's like discrete items that you want to handle, uh, that you want to work on, I also think that issues are the more natural approach to that. But the key is who's going to curate it, who's going to push it to people. Because that's what I start to see as, as people these days are part of so many GitHub projects. Uh, the amount of issues is, is just still overwhelming. So somebody still needs to nag people to get stuff done. Unfortunately, assigning a GitHub issue these days to some extent is not just going to cut it. But so good idea. I think such somebody needs to curate it. And for uh, I think that the split for me is, is it an actual working document? Then it's fine for certain tasks, but that's the output artifact. If it's just following up on the task and the issues, the better, I think. I think the curating would naturally live with, with the chairs unless delegated. Yes. I, I'm happily delegated. 
um, but the, um, by default, it falls onto the chairs under the delegated. Easy. So um, yeah. unless unless someone volunteers, um, no, I can I can do that as well. I can essentially make sure that those issues are up to date and assigned, and it's kind of yeah could be tech lead, uh, responsibility as well. Yeah. That was my thinking, of course, if, if you're the one who volunteers, then we can just delegate this. Uh, I mean, we don't need an official delegation, yeah. blah, 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 blah. We are thankfully far away from this level of, of complexity in the operational model, but consider it delegated. <laughs> uh, I think we are actually overrun by two minutes. Oh, we are actually overrun by, by 12 minutes, because this meeting ended 10 minutes early. Um, should we actually have those short meetings or do we want to use the full hour? I would tend towards using the full hour and not having not having this weird 50 minute thing because we actually need that time. So anyone opposed to me asking Amy to change that invite? So uh, and I know why Amy is actually doing it and it is actually a good reason. So the reason is that if for people who have to continue right after this meeting and some of them have a meeting meeting meeting, they at least have a 10 minute break for whatever is necessary for human beings to do 10 minutes. And so usually plan for the 50 meetings and then do the run over that for I think that's so I, I like the practice of having like 10 minutes in between two meetings that are kind of planned and still if meetings run over, you're fine. But otherwise if you run over, people will just randomly start to disappear uh, because they have to be in other meetings again. That's why I like this idea of like having this 10 minute buffer in there and not actively planning for it, which would get you down to like a zero minute buffer. Didn't you just say you like the possibility to overrun and then say that people drop off? Of course they don't. If you don't have the overrun, so like if you like block for the full hour, because that's usually when you start to block. Uh, then the next meeting most likely starts at the next full hour. Right? Then you have this 10 minute buffer in between, but you're not actively planning it. If you plan for the full hour, people very often just drop off at the full hour because nobody's taking a, a meeting, meeting for 10 minutes or really they do. That's my point. So, like the 50 minutes, it usually gives people time to prepare for the next meeting, gives you a 10 minute overrun buffer. People will not abruptly leave. Um, but they wouldn't scare and, and yeah. Yeah, also fine by me. Both are fine. Any any other voices or okay, then we just leave it is and and we'll try and see if if we over on the future or not. Okay, then thank you very much um, for for your time and for, for your brains. Um, and see you at the latest in two weeks. And let's try and get get feedback to Steve. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. See you. Bye.